Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. So, today we're tackling something that deals with you moving your scripts, your add-ons from one version of Blender to another. We've already made a video about this, but I think a lot of you guys didn't get the memo, so it's worth reiterating the fact that you can actually do this without downloading versions of your add-ons over and over again and filling your memory. By default, if you go over to Blender.org, I believe this happens to almost all of you guys, you go over to the download section and you see this beautiful version, you know, the latest and the greatest, you download it and all of a sudden, there's an experimental branch and then there is this alpha feature and there's this beta feature you would like to try it out this is extremely nice but then one of the problems you guys probably will be getting over time is once you go ahead and download these you start having issues moving your add-ons from one party to another and in this case i'm referring to the blender versions this is not a problem one thing to always keep in mind whenever you're moving your add-ons or whenever you're trying to test an add-on for either of these is to make sure that if you go over to, you know, whichever add-ons you're trying to get. So in this case, if we're looking at Botanic, for example, so if you go over to the add-ons that you want to use, most of the times they do specify what version of the software that these add-ons are supported on. So in this case, we're looking at the Botanic add-on, which is supported for Blender 2.83 all the way to 2.93. And the same thing happens for, you know, practically almost every other kind of add-ons right there. Random Flow, for example, if you go ahead and check it out, you'd also notice that this is specifically supported for 2.93. So it's worth knowing that if you would like to move your add-ons from one version of Blender to another version of Blender, it makes sense to know what version of Blender that these actually support. With this here, we're going to go ahead and check out how you can actually move it and see where your add-ons are saved so you don't need to download this all the time because that is one of the questions you guys have. I constantly download my Blender add-ons all the time when I'm downloading a new version of Blender and that can cause you so much headache. So right here, I have Blender 3.0, the beta, and then I do have Blender 2.93. And because this is the primary version of Blender I use, most of the add-ons I get to work with, they exist here. So how do you find your add-ons? And how you can find your add-ons are very simple. So if you're on Windows, you need to open up this window and then you need to go over to where you have your application data. Now for us to actually fast track that, we would launch into our temporary folder. So go all the way back to your application data and then go over to roaming. Now, if you go over to the roaming section, you also notice that you have lots of tools roaming behind the scene. So what this simply means is this is where some of the datas are being saved in terms of temporary data or data that the app would have to reuse over and over. So you get to find them here. So right now you notice we have Blender Foundation and if we double click in there, all the versions of Blender that I have on this PC and I've actually tested on this PC, you would find them here. So. If I go over to the Blender right now, you see we have 2.8, 2.81, 2.82, all the way to 3.0. And this makes a lot of sense. So what we're going to do is I'm also going to go ahead and open this up in a new window so that we can have that right here. And then we have this other one here. So if I open up the 3.0, which is now here, and I open up the 2.93, for you to get your add-ons, you need to go over to your script section. And then, you know, if I go over to script, you notice we have add-ons. And then I also have the add-ons here. So if I double click on the add-ons, you can see all the add-ons I have in 2.93. And of course, if I go over to the add-on section here, you would notice I only have like the Tetris add-on and then the Omniverse add-on. So to move your add-ons from one place to another is super easy. If I go in and check out 2.93, you already noticed because we, you know, played with this before, the grass blade is here. If I go over to my 3.0, if I go over to the edit section, go over to preference, and let's find this right around here. Let's see, let's find this here. It should be add-ons. And if I type in the word grass, you notice we don't have it. So if we would like to move this from one place to another, that would be super nice. And let's just do that one more time. Click, drag, drop, and get that copied. So if I now go back to the Blender add-on and let's just hit the refresh button, go right here, you know, we're working with 3.0 right now, type in the word grass, you see it, we now have a grass blade. So if we have it here, you notice by simply turning it on, we have it right here. Let's test it out and see if it works. Delete that, put up a grid, and then go over to grass blade, select the platform, select any of these, all right? So I don't know, let's play with the first one, hit the load button and see if this add-on actually works. And in this way, you can easily move things from one place to another without, 
you know, re-downloading this thing all over again, trying to get the developer to send you back that stuff, or, you know, you know, you just have to get these things working. So with this now, we have this beautiful stuff. Let's test it out, see if it renders. Let's switch this to cycles and let's render this. Okay, so it renders, that means it works. So you need to confirm if the add-on you're working with is also compatible with whatever version of Blender that you're working with. And this actually makes sense. So once you have this, you can now do so many things. Something else I think uh, you guys may need to also know is your Blender by default, once you start loading up add-ons, it takes some space. Now, this is something nobody really talks about. And I think it just makes sense to talk about it. And how you can track this is very simple. So if you go over to diskanalyzer.com, they do have this very interesting app known as Wistry. So with Wistry, you can download it and check what is occupying your system memory. So you don't need to start second guessing what is making something fill up your memory space or not. So with this here, you can simply go over to your disk of choice. So if I click on this drop down, I can select any of this disk and I can choose to scan them. And you know, in this case, after scanning, you can see that your Blender Foundation folder is having 52 gig of data currently on my PC. Previously, it was way more than that. I think it was about 100 and something. So if you go all the way down, you can start noticing what add-on has way more stuff. Like right now, 2.93 has about 40 gig of file and all this goes down, down, down. And this is how you can troubleshoot and also tell what file or what folder is having more data on your on, on your PC. So this just makes sense. And for anyone who likes to come through, check it out. Of course, this is for free, so you can download this one and you can use it to analyze your disk and play with it. Something else which I would strongly suggest is if you have a couple of add-ons, okay? So if you have like a whole lot of add-ons, please back them up. Back them up on some hard drive or something. That would definitely come in handy. So in case your system crashes, you don't need to go ahead and start re-downloading these things all over and all over again. You can just simply plug and play and get these things up and running. So this is more like it. Always confirm with the add-on creators what version of Blender that these add-ons support. Right now, no one is talking about 3.0, probably because it isn't out. And yes, there's going to be a couple of fixes just to accommodate for 3.0, but always confirm before you move your add-on from one version of Blender to another. And for sure, for those who like to come through and get this for free, you can also get it. And I believe this would solve some of your problems once you download various versions of Blender and try to get your add-ons to work with them. So. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you learned something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And until I see you guys in the next one, peace.